Well, today I'm trying to troubleshoot a no-start condition. Actually, it's one of those tough ones where it's an intermittent no-start condition. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to move the RV and turned the ignition key and nothing happened. And I thought, well, I had you know all the lights and everything were on the dashboard. Everything looked normal, but it just no start, no click, no nothing. So I had the wife go in there. I said, okay. You turn over the key, let me go right here on the firewall and check the starter relay. In case you don't know, here's your, take your cover off. Inside here, i hold this thing so I can point to it. There you go. There's your starter relay. And if you have a no start condition, that can happen. All the lights are on the dashboard, everything looks normal, and you turn the key all the way over and nothing but silence. That's the first thing you want to check. Now luckily, the um, starter relay and the auxiliary fan relay are both the same relay, so you can swap them. So as a test, if it, the RV won't start, just this is the one that st controls the starting of the, of the starter. Just so pull it out and swap it with this one, swap them back and forth. And if it starts up, then you know that's the problem, is the relay. And so when the wife went out there and turned the key, I could feel it clicking. Of course, feeling it click doesn't mean it's working. It just means it's clicking, but the points could be burned up and not making contact. So I swapped them. They, it still clicked, and I still had no start. So then I crawled under the RV and just kind of tapped on the starter, wiggled some wires, crawled out from under it, and the wife tried it again. Oh, and it started up just fine. It's been starting ever since. So, but I know if it's happened once, it's liable to happen again. So... What I'm about to do now is drop the starter, it don't look too hard, and I'll show you what that process is like. I'm going to get into it, see if I can try to determine why I had this intermittent no start. That's, that's the last thing I want is on the road, uh, get a situation like that and have to get a starter out on the middle, middle of the interstate or something. Other. So that's what I'm going to do. Curl on these here and we'll see what we well, find Well, I thought I'd show this. I know it's simple, but... First thing you want to do is remove your ground cable off of your engine starting battery because you sh when you when I take those big cables loose on the starter, you don't want that big cable laying around under there hot that's going to touch something. So, and you want to make sure you're dealing with the correct battery. This is the engine starting battery, not the house batteries. So, uh, I've got that loose. Now, I'll crawl under there and get to working on it. Okay, here we are under the RV. Here's the starter. And yeah, it's kind of tight under here. I don't have it jacked up or anything. But I took my test light just to make sure I had no current on this, and I don't. And it don't look like it's going to be too hard to remove. You got the, you got one bolt back here to support the weight of the starter. You got these two long bolts here. Take a couple wires off, and I should be able to drop it right off fairly easy. There's the heat shield. That should come off with it. So. We'll start taking a few things loose and see how far it is out. came out really easy. Uh, no, no problem at all. And if you're going to do this on your own 8.1 Vortec, very tool-wise, all you need is a 13mm uh, socket, 3 8 ratchet, um, and 8 8mm uh, quarter-inch drive to get your small. This is also 13mm, and these are 13mm. And I was wrong earlier. I was when I was looking at it. I was seeing that this bolt here. That's also that's a 10 millimeter. I was thinking that was um, supporting the rear of the starter, but it does not. It just supports the heat shield, so that don't have to come loose. All you gotta do is take your wires off, drop the two bolts, starter drops right out. So now I'm gonna take this inside on the on my bench and take things apart and see what it looks like. So it. here's what I found out took my starter apart. Well, first of all, when I went to take it apart, found out I needed a special socket uh, called an E-socket. It's like a it's like a Torx bit, except it's in a socket form. So I ran down to the street and bought me a set of sockets. Uh, so if you ever want to take one of these apart, you're going you're gonna to have to have that. Can't see what size that is, but that's what size it took uh, to get it apart. And looking at the starter, Actually, the starter internally is, looks great. I mean, the brushes, can't even tell they've even been worn. And this is a 2000, got, it's got 11 years on it. So that looks fine. Uh, the 
you know, the magnets. That's something else I was going to point out to people. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they got something, a uh, car won't start, they reach under there with a hammer and tap the side of the starter. Well, the reason why you never want to do that is because you have ceramic magnets in here and they're glued in place. If you hit that with a hammer, you're going to break your magnet and you're going to have all kinds of trouble. So don't do that. And when you take this apart, you know, just be careful about make you take a magic marker, make you a mark so you put the housing on exactly where it needs to go, how it came off. Because you got drain holes here and you want to make sure your drain holes are at the bottom so it gets any moisture out of it. But my troubleshooting, I believe what I'm going to go ahead and do is just replace the solenoid. Because the starter itself is great. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart. I'm going to put a little grease on this bush in here. Add some more grease to this. You know, it's amazing that you know, how it's kind of a relatively small starter that starts this great big 8.1 Vortec engine. But uh, here's part of the reason why it's got this uh, gear reduction in here. That really gives it the torque, I guess. Gets it going. But here's the solenoid, and, and I see some. There's some numbers on here, so I'm gonna try to get on the on the internet, see if I can't track track down just the solenoid by itself. So I believe what's happened. Where I had that no start condition. I believe that the, there's maybe just, just in, intermittently, every now and then, the solenoid's not uh, making contact. Could be corrosion, whatever. But after 11 years. Uh, who knows but uh, that'll be cheap insurance I'll go ahead and pop a new, new solenoid on there I know the starter itself is in good shape and I'll clean up all my wires uh, tool wise to get this apart uh, can't remember if I mentioned that before but uh, you need like a 13 millimeter socket to get the starter bolts off with and uh, 8 millimeter for all these small ones but then again you, you can get, get this goofy socket to, to get the solenoid off those little bitty here they are those goofy little screws you gotta get off with that socket so I guess that's about it I'll get a new solenoid and just kinda put it back together the way I took it off and so all in all the starter come off come off really easy uh, you know you can just what no problem at all they go back on easy just remember to disconnect your battery when you do this and starters are relatively reasonable I believe I've seen them online for I don't know 80, 80 something bucks bucks um, well, let me talk about something else while I'm here. Over the years, when I've had a vehicle of my own and it's finally time to replace the starter, I like to a lot of times rebuild the original starter because a lot of times your OEM starter, the factory starter, will be of better quality than if you just go and buy a discount rebuilt starter because you never know, you know, are the windings as strong, you know, are they got cheap parts in them or whatever. Because most times, it's been my experience over the years. Eventually, the starter, it's just your brushes will get worn, and you'll you'll give you it'll give you the same symptom like a solenoid. You'll you'll go you'll just maybe click click it won't start, but you tap it and it'll start. Well, one of these if one of these brushes loses contact, you will get that same symptom because the current has to flow through. So if you get a brushes worn wore down enough and you tap it and it starts, and you think oh it's just a solenoid. Well, it's not a solenoid. It's actually the brush. But you can get these set of brushes relatively cheap compared to a whole starter. You just buy this little plate here that unbolts, put that back on there for maybe you know 20 bucks or so when everything else is still perfectly good. And uh, just rebuild it yourself and then you know you still got a, a high quality starter you know inside. You still got all the original components uh, from the factory because sometimes you don't know what you're getting from the uh, aftermarket Taiwan or something like that. So hopefully that'll Give someone some help. Well, I decided to go ahead and take this all apart and clean everything up real good. And I was going to talk to you about my uh, solenoid investigation and what I found out. Because here's the original solenoid, the OEM from 2005, what came on the RV. And I got to looking up the, um, the AC Delco number, is that one right there, but I couldn't find any of those uh, locally. And doing some searching, I was finding solenoids anywhere from thirteen dollars to fifty dollars. And it's, of course, it's hard. To, I want a good good solenoid. I don't want to put no thirteen dollar solenoid on my motorhome. So in my research, I found here at O'Reilly's this number here, an S fifty one thirty. It's actually manufactured by Borg Warner. I didn't. That's what the BW stands for, which I didn't. The uh, parts counter guy educated me on. It is made in China, but it is you know just look at the finish. It does look like a very high quality part. It's good and heavy. Looks virtually identical. 
and it was $45.83 with a lifetime warranty. So I got that and I took I took all the gears and stuff out, I cleaned them up. I carefully, where'd my piece at? Uh, oh, yeah, this part here. I carefully took the bolts out of it and left the brushes on the armature here so they didn't come flying off and have to, have to deal with putting them back on. So I, I got this off so I could inspect the bearing. I'll, I'll just put a little dab of grease in there. And of course, a little, little dab of grease on my, on my gears as I put all that back together. Uh, got all this cleaned up. No. I'll put all that back and of course there's a little bearing down there in the bottom, a little needle bearing. Put some grease on it also. So I guess I'll put all this back together, bench test it, see how it works, and then uh, put it back on the motorhome. Hopefully we'll have no no more no start conditions. It's not a good feeling. Solenoid is installed and I got me a little battery boost thing here. It's amazing this thing, this little device can start a car. You wouldn't believe it, but it does. Anyway, here we go. Let's see how she sounds. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's put it back on the RV and. One more yeah. thing I, I wanted to mention because this has a lifetime warranty on the solenoid. Whenever I get a component that's got a lifetime warranty, I try to write it on the part. Because you know, this when this starter, you know, five, ten years from now, I have the same problem. I'm going to completely forget that this solenoid has a lifetime warranty. So the next time I take it off, I'll, hopefully my writing will still be on there and I'll see it. And I'll say, oh, I'll get a free solenoid. So uh, that's a little tip because it's hard to remember those things as the years go by. We're back under the RV and everything's all bolted up. Been real, real easy, and got my wires all back in the right spot. Everything looks good, so we'll go up top, turn the key, and see what happens. Well, I got done just in time. Got here in the RV. Of course, it's like two o'clock in the morning. You see, it's dark outside, and it's just now starting to sprinkle the rain. So let's. I got the doghouse off, so I can get to the engine, and we'll see what happens now. There she goes! Awesome! Alright, so now you know how to rebuild your starter on your 8.1 Vortec. Over and out.